What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Coming at you with more out of the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. So making a video today about who exactly fits the bill to get an M1 MacBook for data science in late 2020. I'm going to report my findings with the M1 MacBook so far, and then considering these factors, describe who fits the bill to get one of these. I've used the M1 MacBook Air for several days now, and let's get into what I do like about the new Mac. Macs are an absolute joy to develop code on. The fact that they're built on top of Unix makes a lot of software engineering tasks really easy and seamless compared to Windows, in my opinion. And this new Mac is no different. It flies through all these tasks really, really quickly. The Retina display is beautiful to look at for hours on end while you code and things run really, really smoothly. Things like content creation, Photoshop, or Premiere run really well too. Adobe products currently will still need to run with Rosetta on the M1. They currently don't have the native support for Apple Silicon yet, but that's coming up. And the programs as they are right now, even with Rosetta, run very fast. I can't imagine that it's gonna get faster, but it likely will with this native support. Overall, with the M1 MacBook Air, my experience is so much more pleasant than my Windows desktop, which has some pretty extreme hardware for machine learning. Maybe this is a personal preference, but I gladly sacrifice a little bit of performance in the component cooling department, as well as the GPU side of things, to really have the portability, as well as the user experience that this product delivers. And for daily use, this is really going to fly through everything that you throw at it. So that covers a couple of the kind of daily driver tasks, maybe some software tasks, as well as content creation. Uh, let's get into a couple of the data science specific tasks that you're likely to be running on this machine. So my experience with Jupyter Notebooks, which is a very common data science tool, it's been incredible. For CPU based tasks like data cleaning, data pre-processing, data extraction, this is gonna eat Intel's lunch make them buy another lunch, and then eat that lunch too. It's that impressive. You should check out my previous video where I did an actual machine learning test with the new M1 MacBook Air. If you're a Mac fan, in essence, this is going to be two to three times faster than your previous MacBook with a lot of these types of data science tasks. And I should mention too that that test was not even done with the ARM optimized version of Jupyter Notebook, which I'm still trying to install. Once I get that installed correctly, I'm going to give an update and see if speed improves even further, which it likely will. All right, so I, I covered a lot of what I really like about this M1 MacBook. Let's get into what I'm not loving about these computers so far. And the main thing is going to be the ARM support for software. Specifically, it's trying to install TensorFlow Mac OS, which lots of people are still having issues with, myself included. One of the main reasons I bought this machine was for trying the ARM architecture with that package. <laughs> and so far it's been pretty difficult to install. And unfortunately there's not been a whole lot of support from Apple at this time. Saying that though, I do remain hopeful that these issues will get worked out as the product and the software matures. The product did just come out a few weeks ago, so I am staying patient. Another thing that I need to point out with using the M1 MacBook for data science tasks is the RAM limitation. I'd recommend grabbing the 16 gigabyte version if you do plan on getting one of these so that you're going to be able to use it for a wider range of machine learning tasks. And even then, make sure that 16 gigabytes of RAM is going to be enough for your workload because the RAM in these systems cannot be upgraded. It's integrated into a tightly coupled unit. Perhaps next year we're going to get a 32 gigabyte version of the M1 MacBook and some of the issues with the ARM versions of the software will have been kind of ironed out and these may become the go-to laptop for data science. But until then, the RAM remains a limitation as well as the ARM software support. So coming back to the title of this video, considering these factors, who should get an M1 MacBook to use for data science? My answer to that are people who are starting out or newer in data science and machine learning who plans to do lots of tasks like data cleaning as well as CPU-based machine learning. 
This will also include those who want to do some shallow neural network training if you have the grit to get the TensorFlow Mac OS package installed. It's also going to be for those who want to use this laptop for lots of other things besides machine learning. Coding, content creation, you're going to find the user experience of this product really amazing. Those who are starting out in data science are likely not going to be jumping right into training deep neural networks. And training deep neural networks is the main use case for getting a beefy NVIDIA GPU. And for that use case, I'll recommend a non-Mac that has an NVIDIA GPU that it's also going to allow you to kind of get experience with the libraries and the CUDA that you'll need to run things on that GPU. NVIDIA is pretty much running the game right now in terms of deep learning and deep learning hardware. So becoming familiar with that, I think you're gonna to have to not stick with Mac products at this time. But if you're not planning to do some serious deep learning, then you'll find the M1 is a great option. And again, consider the 16 gigabyte RAM version to expand the range of data science tasks that you're going to be able to accelerate with this computer. If you think the M1 MacBook is right for you, I'll put a link to both the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air in the description so you can check them out. I hope this helped clear up a couple of the questions that you might have about whether or not you wanna get an M1 for your particular data science workload. As I say in all my videos, if you wanna reach out to me and describe your particular use case to see what type of laptop might be right for you, I'd be more than happy to offer my two cents on the matter. Additionally, for those who don't think the M1 MacBook's right for you at this time, I'll be putting out a more comprehensive laptop buying guide for those who might be interested in the future. Stay tuned. Well, that's about all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like or a comment down below. Also, think about subscribing to the channel. I'm really fired up about talking about the stuff and have a lot more video ideas in this space that I'm planning to push out. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a good day. Bye.